Hi and welcome to Temeco. In this video, we are continuing where we left off at the constraint equation formulation of the crankshaft mechanism. We have selected the coordinate systems for each body of the system and also derived the constraint equations for the first revolute joint located at point O. The same procedure is followed in the case of the revolute joint between the crank and the shaft. Point P, defined via the crank attached reference system, must be equal if it is defined via the shaft attached reference system. Mathematically, it looks like RAP equals RBP. RA plus AA U bar AP minus RB plus AB U bar BP equals 0. Again, considering that U bar X bar AP equals LA by 2 and U bar Y bar AP equals 0 and U bar X bar BP equals minus LB by 2 and U bar Y bar BP equals 0, we get another two constraint equations. C3 is RXA plus LA by 2 cos theta A minus RXB plus LB by 2 cos theta B equals 0. C4 is RYA plus LA by 2 sin theta A minus RYB plus LB by 2 sin theta B equals 0. Our next constraint to tackle is the revolute joint between the shaft and the block. Applying the same procedure as before, this constraint is defined by measuring point Q's position via the shaft attached reference system and the block attached reference system. Something like this. RBQ equals RCQ. Similarly, we get RB plus AB U bar BQ minus RC plus AC U bar CQ equals 0. Considering in this case that the following terms are U bar X bar BQ equals LB by 2 and U bar Y bar BQ equals 0 and U bar X bar CQ equals U bar Y bar CQ equals 0. Our two next constraint equations become C5 is RxB plus LB by 2 cos theta B minus RxC equals 0. C6 is RYB plus LB by 2 sin theta B minus RYC equals 0. Finally, we have our translational constraint, the joint between the block and the ground. First, you know that the block cannot rotate. This means that theta C minus C equals 0, where C is a constant indicating the initial angle of the block at the beginning of the movement. We can say that for this case, this initial angle is 0. Then our seventh constraint will be C7 is theta C equals 0. Our final constraint tells us that the block cannot move in the vertical direction. We can mathematically express this condition by saying that RYC minus D equals 0. Constant D represents the initial vertical displacement of the block. For our mechanism, this initial distance is 0. Our last constraint becomes C8 is RYC equals 0. We have 8 constraints. We can collect them in a vector of constraints as follows. In this lesson, we had another example where we calculated the constraint equations for a mechanical system. Hopefully, you got the procedure we followed to find our vector of constraints. You can use it from now on in your exercises and applications. Thanks for watching and see you soon.